Welcome to uh, the Autonomy Working Group Inside Sharing webinar today. And then in this webinar, we will share with you the working group's vision, mission, and our progress. Uh, today, we have Tony as our host speaker, uh, CJ, the chair of Autonomy Working Group from Tier 4, Simon, also from Tier 4, and William from TomTom. Hi. Hi. Okay, now uh, hand over to you, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah. My name is uh, Tony Chen. So I lead of MIH Autonomy Working Group. So in today's uh, sharing, so I will talk about Autonomy Working Group, the mission, plan, and the status. So before I begin my talk, I'd like to give you an overview of this one hour sharing. The first of start off by AD working, autonomy working group, the mission and the plan by myself. Following up with uh, the tier for the CJ here. Here for the CJ, he is uh, autonomy the working group chair. So he is a uh, tier four the president also. So he will talk about the autonomy working group, the scope and the status update. And the, for the next one is a tier for the, the Simon. Simon, he is a, the tier for the director of engineering. So he is a, the autonomy sub subgroup, the sensor group, the chair. So he will present and talk about the sensor scope and the status update. So the last one is uh, the map, uh, the Tong Tong, the within. Uh, our uh, map API just involved in uh, autonomy working group uh, discussion. So Tong Tong is uh, leading the map API the definition. So map API will relative to GPS IMU. So uh, within will talk about uh, for the map API, the concept and the planning. Okay, let's start it. Okay, firstly, uh, let me to introduce the MIH the working group. The MIH working group uh, involves the whole vehicle system, the EV vehicle, EV the, the system have uh, 14 working groups. So autonomy working group is one of this voting the, the working group is from the end of last year. So in autonomy working group, our mission is uh, to define the common interface for the sensor fusion, edge computing, and the map integration for ADAS or the autonomy driving the future and the open up these futures for ADAS and the autonomy the development. So as I say, so the autonomy working group chair is a tier four, and the tier four as she say, he will lead the autonomy working group team, have for the regular the bi-weekly meeting, discussion with autonomy working group partners. And the autonomy working group have for the sub working group, the chair, is uh, Simon. He is uh, handling for the uh, sensor, the API the definition. So it have a regular the uh, biweekly meeting. Yeah, with the uh, relative the uh, sensor partner together. Okay. So uh, in the autonomy working group, the important mission is uh, to define the standardized the uh, AD system the interface. In the conventional the vehicle system design and the developments is uh, quite close. So most of the parts are proprietary designed by each the OEM or tier one requirement. So when we have the standard interface, it will have the agnostic. Agnostic aims to support the cross the platform. The devices can adapt to, to different platform by MIH our standard interface. That will to be the intelligence and the openness. So what is the benefits in the standard interface? So the 
When following the standard interface the past, that will have a high compatibility in AD connection. So OEN and the tier one have a more compatible compatible pass selection. This can drive cooperation with the multiple supplier in automotive the AD ecosystem. So this can speed up the development cycle by more pass selection and can reduce pass testing cycle also. So of course, when development cycle reduction, it have the cost reduction benefit and have a greater the age. So of course, the AD connective the pass need to be meet, need, uh, must be meet the automotive the grade. The system need to be uh, must be following the functional safety requirement also. Okay. So you can see this is uh, the generic the AD block diagram. The center side is a logic the application system. It's almost a SOC. So from uh, from the button up the connection, yeah, let me to explain our uh, standard interface, the definition. The first one is a drive by wire API. The drive by wire API is connected to the scalable. This API just just lock down uh, this API definition with our uh, autonomy working group partners in June. So right now we are in the review process. So this is uh, the drive by wire API. Purpose to utilize this API interface to adopt different uh, scalable. So it can have uh, the longitudinal the control, accelerate the accelerate and the brake control. And they have a lateral, lateral the steering right and the left the control. So you can see that this uh, the video is uh, MIH had implemented this drive by wire API in the tester vehicle. Yeah, so the next one, the upside is a sensor API. So sensor API have uh, the camera and the LiDAR and the radar and the ultrasonic and the GPS, GNSS, and the IMU, these sensors. So because, the, because the, in the conventionally, the, the vehicle the design is very close. So as I say, so most of parts are proprietary design. When we have uh, this, uh, the standard interface sensor API, so it have uh, the high, our target should be the high compatibility the development. So from the here is a map API. Map API, map API is a for localization. It can enhance the ADAS or the autonomy driving. It can prevent the wrong intersection the drive or misdirection. Okay. Next one is for the map API. So currently most of in the vehicle, the software and the data is very close. Yeah, example maybe for the new map. So when you when the user, the driver, wants to update the map or some data or get a problem needed to renew, is needed to recall to a service center. Yeah, that is very inconvenient. So in when we can go the telemetrics, that goes through the T box. It can have the the B two S or the CICD, the cloud service. This can be upgraded or download from the OTA conveniently and the quickly and the immediately. So the last one is a KBIT API. This API is for a display, for a autonomous driving system, the display in the dashboard or HUD, head up the display, yeah, or any the display interface. That can be controlled maybe by the gesture or the touch touch screen or the voice recognition. So it will go through this uh, capital API. So this is uh, all of the API, the interface. Right now in the autonomy, the working group uh, with definition. And uh, right now we are ongoing to discussion the sensor API. 
for a dry bio API, as I say, it's just done at uh, June, and uh, right now is uh, in the review the process. Yeah. So in the next page, so CJ is uh, the autonomy working group chair. So he is a uh, tier for the president also. So he will yeah please talk about this uh, the section. Yeah, she said this is your turn. Okay, thank you, Tony. So let me start first on the next slide um, with uh, an example architecture. Um, so ultimately, what we're trying to do with the MIH EV kit specifications is to to provide the ecosystem with the uh, interfaces and requirements for implementing all of the components of next generation EVs. Um, AD, ADAS functionality is a key component, of course, and what's really important to understand is that uh, the, the functionality of, of the AD uh, or ADAS system needs to be tightly integrated with the other elements of a, of a vehicle. So as Tony showed previously, um, integration with the infotainment system, um, connectivity through the telematics unit or TCU, these are all important aspects of how the, uh, the functionality is uh, integrated and supports the capabilities of the overall platform. So these interfaces that the, the AD, ADAS functionality has to these other, um, what are traditionally considered ECUs in, in uh, uh, vehicles or automotive uh, platforms. Um, in the next generation, they, they start to look a lot more like software workloads. Um, there, there's a big push around software defined vehicle development. And that's one of the things that we look at as well, um, which I'll touch on later in, in the presentation. But the, the fundamental idea that these are all uh, predominantly software applications that can be running on different types of compute platforms, that can be uh, high performance centralized compute, it can be distributed compute. There's very different architectures based on uh, the type of application that, the, uh, the, that this architecture goes into. And what we're trying to do is define these specifications in such a way that they scale across many different architectures and, and, and applications uh, and support the functionality uh, required for uh, basic uh, ADAS AD implementations. Okay, uh, moving on to the next slide. So, um, what we defined the scope of the working group, the autonomy work group to be, was really around um, developing an open framework for uh, implementing AD, ADAS functionality. And, and um, MIH has an alliance with the AutoWare Foundation uh, from the perspective of looking at uh, work that's being done there to define open frameworks for the development of autonomy solutions. So the, the AutoWare Foundation has uh, a, a program called the Open AD Kit, which is really around the idea of defining uh, uh, open source uh, based autonomy solutions and all the necessary uh, frameworks and tools for developing these applications. Um, so the, the goal of the work group is to, to leverage the capabilities that are being specified there um, and then look at how to adapt them uh, specifically to the requirements for integration into the MIH EV kit. So this means looking at the roadmap, the features and, and requirements of what the EV kit is trying to achieve and comprehending those requirements in the specifications we developed. We want to also um, look at how to develop the, um, the processes and validation requirements to achieve automotive grade and safety requirements. As Tony mentioned, this is a key requirement for many of the applications that EV kit will be used for. Uh, passenger vehicles that must meet uh, stringent safety requirements and therefore we want to comprehend um, how those requirements will impact the uh, 
the interfaces, the specifications, and and the testing and verification requirements that we um, uh, specify as part of the autonomy working group. Um, and then lastly, working on reference implementation. So how can we take these specifications uh, and implement practical, usable reference points for the ecosystem to use to start to develop uh, commercial and, and production grade solutions against these requirements that can be integrated into EV kit solutions. So these are all the, the high level goals. And in order to achieve those goals, the autonomy working group is having to work closely with many of the other working groups um, that have been formed. So as we discussed, when we look at things like how does the AD ADAS functionality work with the smart cabin or the, the instrument cluster. This is something that we have to work closely with the other group to align on the interface specifications. And, and that's part of the scope of what we uh, do as a working group. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Um, I mentioned that uh, there, there's work being done to leverage what the AutoWare Foundation is doing um, in the Open AD Kit. So uh, what you see here is a high-level representation of the the AutoWare Foundation Open AD Kit. And at the top, you have um, the typical functionality that you would see in in a AD or ADAS application around uh, the perception, planning, control, localization, sensing functionality, interfaces to the maps, and so forth. This is a very um, generic representation. It's technology agnostic, um, but in this case, we just happen to be using um, AutoWare because it's an open source platform supporting all of this capability, and it, it's something that can be readily used by the ecosystem to, um, to start basic development and prototyping of solutions um, against the, uh, the requirements that are being specified by MIH. Um, the AutoWare Foundation is, is taking the AutoWare application and we're mapping that on top of a framework that is targeting software-defined vehicle development. And um, that's something where we're working closely with the SOFI SIG um, which is another organization which both AutoWare Foundation and MIH are participating around the idea of cloud native development and, and deployment to the edge where what you develop and validate in the cloud architecturally resembles very much the edge architecture. And by doing this, you enable developers to validate and, and confirm the functionality already through uh, simulation platforms in the cloud and have high confidence that what they deploy to the edge platforms will work as expected. So the, the key concepts here are around how do you um, implement a framework that supports many workloads. So the workloads include uh, infotainment, telematics, AD, ADAS functionality, all within the same software architecture. And then the architecture as implemented in the cloud mirrors closely what is in the actual vehicle so that there's a high correlation between development verification and, and deployment uh, of the solution. And then coupling that with the MIH specifications, the Open AD Kit will provide the starting point where um, OEMs, uh, solution providers, can start to develop solutions that are based on the EV kit specifications, the APIs and requirements, and start to make those available for, for rapid integration into MIH EV kit uh, platform. So as Tony mentioned, the, the key objective here is really to provide the, the framework, the tools and capabilities to accelerate the development, integration and verification of AD, ADAS functionality into a broad range of end applications that will be based on the MIH EV kit specifications. Uh, and AutoWare as a platform will out of the box support all of these APIs that we're specifying in, in the MIH Autonomy Workgroup. 
So it provides a great starting point to uh, prototype and uh, work towards commercial implementations of, of products. Um, next slide, please. So this recaptures what uh, Tony mentioned earlier, the, the, the AD, ADAS application really needs to be able to support these APIs to all the different elements in the vehicle. Um, some of the first uh, APIs that we focused on as a work group um, are shown on the bottom there where um, drive-by wire, how the AD application sends commands to the chassis for steering, braking, acceleration. Um, this was actually the first specification developed by the work group. We've already submitted this now to the MIH Technical Committee for ratification, so it's going through uh, the review process, and we hope that by the, the end of the year timeframe, this uh, drive-by wire spec will be adopted and, and published as the basis for um, the uh, API implementation for the, the connection between the drive-by wire and the ADDA-DAS applications. We've started work now on a couple of other APIs, uh, the sensor API, the map API. Um, sensors include the LiDAR, smart cameras, cameras, uh, IMU, GNSS, all the different types of inputs that AD, ADAS functionality requires in order to uh, localize, uh, perceive the environment. So the, the goal here is to define a standard set of APIs so that uh, the sensor vendors can very quickly integrate with the uh, ADAS or AD application uh, solutions that are being provided. Similarly, on the mapping solutions, uh, providing uh, interfaces into uh, the, the localization functionality through a standardized mapping interface, and that's something that William will talk about a little bit later from TomTom, and Simon will go into a little bit more detail on the, on the status of the sensor API work. Um, the other work that we're starting to look at now is the network API, how the AD application interfaces with the, uh, the, the telematics functionality, which provides the connectivity to the cloud. There'll be various services and capabilities that have to be supported over this, such as over the air updates of the application, uh, the, the firmware that goes into the sensors and so forth remote monitoring of the system, fleet management systems, all of these types of capabilities have to be uh, interfaced with the AD application through the network API. Um, and then working with the smart cockpit uh, work group, how does the AD uh, or ADAS application convey information and receive information from the cockpit? So this is very important that the occupants of the vehicle that they're seeing information from the AD system around what is it planning to do? What trajectory will it follow? What objects is it detecting on that trajectory to give a high sense of confidence that the AD or ADAS application is doing the, the expected uh, thing in, in the particular uh, situation? And then lastly, there, there also has to be all of the controls that you need around uh, setting destinations, engaging, disengaging the functionality and so forth from, from the smart cockpit. So this is something that we'll work with that team on defining uh, the specific requirements for AD or ADAS um, in, in, in the uh, EV kit architecture. And then lastly, one that we're still under discussion in TDD, how it would be addressed is there's a basic control API where, um, for example, when, when a uh, platform boots up, um, the, the diagnostics that have to be run and the, the control information from the, the chassis for configuration and, and status of the vehicle, uh, things like uh, the, the weight of the vehicle, if there's any changes, the AD or ADAS application has to understand those changes from the standpoint of how it will affect the dynamics of the vehicle and, and uh, essentially the the, the planning and control functionality. So those types of things also have to be considered as, as part of the standardized interfaces that, that work with the, the AD, ADAS functionality. And then 
lastly, one of the key things that we'll have to look at is as um, all of these things are integrated into AD, ADAS uh, commercial or production solutions, what are the requirements that uh, need to be supported by the, the OEMs, the, the solution providers, from the standpoint of verifying their solutions and certifying them against things like safety and automotive requirements. And that's all things that we hope to specify and provide guidance around how to commercialize AD, ADAS applications against the, the MIH EV kits uh, specifications. Okay, going on to the next slide. Um, this is a, a practical example where um, Tony Odi showed a video of the drive-by wire specification implemented in a vehicle. But what we're showing here is the, the software developers actually um, in the cloud using development uh, tools to create scenarios, uh, execute simulations. We're already able to validate that uh, drive-by wire functionality uh, implemented by the AD application using software-defined vehicle uh, development solutions in, in the cloud. So accelerating the development cycle through that cloud verification before uh, the, the actual vehicle integration occurred. Um, I'm not seeing the video actually. <laughs> Sorry, but okay, there you go. So what you're seeing here is uh, a simulation platform that allows you to create various scenarios as far as uh, the roads, the situations that occur. And what you're seeing here is the control of the steering, the braking, the acceleration, actually implemented through the API as specified in the MIH Drive Bar API. So we could already verify that the, the functionality is controlling the car in the expected way using this software-defined vehicle development platform. So this is one of the key things that the, the work group is also looking at, how to enable the tools platforms for the ecosystem uh, to, to verify the solutions during the development phase. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Okay, so um, just to reiterate again, what we're working on here is the combination of the, um, the open source platform that the AutoWare Foundation is working to uh, develop uh, around uh, AutoWare as an AD application. Um, AutoWare is continuing to evolve in its functionality. So um, much of what the foundation is working on right now is the verification of AutoWare operating in different uh, scenarios, which include uh, public road type applications, mobility as a service uh, type solutions in shuttle bus form factors. Also starting to look at passenger vehicle form factors with the ultimate goal of enabling uh, full L4 autonomous driving uh, for robo-taxi type applications. And then all of this built within the, the framework of the Open80 kit, which then can be used for implementing uh, AD, ADAS type functionality following the MIH uh, specifications where the platform as supported by AutoWare will natively support all of the APIs that we're specifying as part of the MIH autonomy work group. And then it becomes part of this framework uh, for the EV kit platform where ADA DAS gets integrated with all of the other elements of the system, including um, the, the OS and middleware solutions that are driving the EV kit platform, uh, supporting all of the cybersecurity and and networking requirements that are specified uh, as part of the platform. Um, yeah. Tony, anything that you want to add to to the summary here from the yeah. MIH perspective? Yeah, thanks for the uh, CJ, the tier four, the talk about the autonomy working group. So the tier four is the AutoWare, the foundation, the founder. 
So yeah, tier four is uh, the uh, MIH Autonomy Working Group the chair also. So uh, Auto World Foundation provide uh, the first the worldwide the autopilot the open source software in in the GitHub. So anyone if you interested in the autopilot development, yeah, so you can download from the GitHub the Auto will provide it. So MIH and the Auto Wheel Foundation, yeah, we have very close cooperation. So same as the uh, CJE say, so uh, MIH we define the uh, the drive by wire API will be implemented to the Auto Wheel Foundation, the open source software. Yeah, thanks for yeah CJ and the tier four help mode development. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so uh, as I say, the uh, drive by wire API just locked down with the, the autonomy working group, the partner together in June. So right now we are in the reviewer the process. So in my in MIH, the community we involved in the automotive expert to review the our the, the drive by wire the API. So when the old reviewer check this API no problem, so we will to check the IP. So IP will to check and to confirm, yeah, with the in in the automotive or any the pattern issue will to be against. So uh, is uh, we plan to release this uh, the drive by wire API in this year. So this is the uh, first the autonomy the working group the release the document. Yeah. Thanks for the autonomy the working group the partner to define this uh, drive by wire drive by wire API. Firstly, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, next one. So in as as uh, say, as uh, the she say and I say uh, define the autonomy the AD the system. So the important for the environment sensing is uh, the sensor. So we define the sensor have a centralized perception, the low sensor path, and the decentralized perception, the smart sensor path. Yeah, the difference is uh, the smart sensor have the uh, object detection and the object perception in the front side. So it will output for object parameters, have a uh, time stamp for the time synchronization and the object dimension. SY or SYD, your yeah, edges, and the position and the facility. So for the sensor, the API, the definition. So now we will turn to the Simon. Simon is uh, the tier four, the director of engineer. So he is uh, the sensor API, the subgroup, the chair. So he will to talk about for the uh, sensor, the API scope and status update. Yeah, thanks for Simon, it's your turn. Okay, thanks Tony. Um, yes, as Tony said, I'll give a brief update today about the work the Autonomy Working Group has been doing on the Sensor API. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so the Sensor API subgroup kicked off in June this year, and so far we've had five meetings with 12 participating organizations. And in those meetings, we've discussed and defined the regarding the sensor API, the motivation, the expected output, use cases, scope, and architecture. And the three highlighted ones there, I'll talk a little bit about today. Um, and after those discussions, uh, we're currently working through the different sensor modalities to propose initial APIs for discussion. So currently we're working on the LiDAR API and also the smart camera sensor API. Um, at the same time, we're drafting and main maintaining the Sensor API standard document, a particular focus on producing some draft API proposals targeting the MAH demo day in November 8th. Okay, next slide, please. So the expected output, um, the mission is to define an interface between sensor modules and the AD, ADAS software stacks to facilitate development of autonomous driving platforms using the MIH EV kit. So the output, output will be an MIH standards application document. And uh, Tony briefly introduced the process uh, that these API standards have to go through 
And so we're at the moment uh, making the draft proposal for the initial center API standards. An example that we can work from is the reference uh, is the drive by wire API standard document that um, CJ mentioned. It's already been drafted by the MAH autonomy working group and it has a type of structure where the AD and 8S modules on the left are uh, interfacing with the MIH vehicle through the interface to find its command interfaces and report interfaces, which communicate with the vehicle over a sort of middleware, in this case, DDS on Ethernet, and uh, define the interface in that way. Similarly, we want to define such a structure for the sensor API, uh, again, with command interfaces and data interfaces, uh, communicating over the DDS um, communications protocol. Okay, next slide, please. So regarding the scope of the sensing API, we want to cover the um, standard uh, autonomy sensors such as LiDAR, camera, radar, ultrasonic, GNSS, IMU, and odometry. And as far as uh, with regarding those sensors, what the API should do, we want to um, describe how data should be communicated. Uh, the raw data or the lowest common structure of the abstraction of the data, but also um, some pre-processed sensor data and working right up to early perception um, in the smart sen sensor API. Uh, also the control information, what sort of control information is sent or received to or from the sensors. Um, to control their operation, their configuration. So what's the minimum required control information? Um, what's some configurable vendor specifications? Uh, what does it need? What does each sensor need to synchronize sufficiently? And in the future, perhaps what diagnostics need, including over the year diagnostics and instance and configuration info. In the future with the other in conjunction with other working groups, we'd, we'd like to look at firmware update to this over the year with a maybe network uh, telematics uh, working group and also the physical and uh, electrical interface to the sensors. Okay, next, thanks. So there's many different architectures a sensor API could use. Um, so the one we're proposing initially uh, has this format um, where we have sensor, uh, sorry, the low level at the physical sensors are producing some datagrams to a sensor module, and then that sensor module is communicating that to commuter, consumer modules over the network. Um, the consumer modules are things like perception, localization, or visualization of sensor information. Um, and there's three important points to this architecture. The first one is that it's a network API the API is defined as an interface from the sort of edge module where the sensor uh, drivers are running to the rest of the network where the consumer modules are operating. And this allows us to define the API from a data centric point of view, what and when data is communicated. Um, it allows the API to be platform and language agnostics. We don't have to worry of a consumer module or sensor module. Uh, what hardware it's running on, what uh, operating system, or even what language it's implemented in. And this enables the sort of microsurface architecture, which is critical to the software defined vehicle that uh, CJ spoke of. And this is inherently scalable, and it allows us to find a quality of service on, on the communications between the modules. The second point is that it's, it does allow for raw data uh, communication, but it also lets you define some intelligence within the sensors. Um, that may include some sort of pre-processing or filtering of data um, up to the sort of object detection with the smart sensors. And a key point of that is that to do that sort of uh, pro smart processing, we might want to take advantage of the system state, knowledge of the system state. Um, so the sensor can do processing, which, which has some knowledge about the application, in this case, the automotive um, autonomy domain, and it can help to push some of the processing to the edge um, to optimize the processing within the entire system. And it also allows sensor vendors to bundle 
hardware and software sensor systems and, and produce and market us sensor solutions like that. And it sort of reflects a sort of growing trend of, of not just generalized sensors like LiDAR sensors, but moving into um, automotive sensors where the, um, where the sensors are designed specifically to do automotive sensing tasks. Okay. Next, thanks. So given that architecture, what sort of requirements or dependencies would these with the consumer module and the sensor driver module, what would they need to to uh, to use this this sensor API? And what's nice about the, the network definition is that it it just means we need to have an installed a uh, network communication or middleware solution, in this case DDS. Um, obviously a, a network or Ethernet connection to the vehicle um, and share the network domain and have ex access to a consistent sensor message, message topic uh, describing the API. And so in this case, in, in this way, we don't have to worry about uh, um, common implementation languages or operating systems or hardware as I discussed, as I mentioned before. Okay, thank you. Next slide. So once we have to find the architecture, then these are the steps we need to go ahead to define uh, each an API for each sensor modality. And I've got five steps there um, associated with the data messages, status messages, um, runtime parameters and sensor configuration, and control commands and state messages. And the next slide will we'll introduce those a bit more. So next slide, please. So the first one was the sensor data format. So we want to define uh, a data format to send sensor data to consumer modules. And this is what a data driven messaging over DDS uh, with at the moment some ROS2 common sensor message formats uh, pr predominantly taken from the AutoWare uh, open AD kit uh, definition. Uh, Point two is configuration status or diagnostics data that the sensor will send to consumer modules. Um, and this can either be uh, on re request on request or a periodic publishing of the status. The next part is the configuration parameters. We'd like to define per sensor configuration requirements and configuration parameters that the sensor must comply with in order to interop interoperate with consumer modules. So this is type of runtime uh, configuration, but also things like um, the the um, frame rate, for instance, must be uh, greater than 10 hertz or something that that the sensors must uh, comply with in order to satisfy the ADAS or AD uh, requirements. The fourth step is to define the sensor control commands. Um, what 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 commands are required? Um, to control the operation of the sensors uh, specifically for the ADAS or AD modules. The final point is to uh, define the system state data, and this uh, allows the sensor to become aware of some parts of the system state. Um, and it can, as I mentioned before, it can decrease computational load on the system by pushing the computation to the edge to allow smart sensor processing for noise reduction, et cetera. Um, so that's the process we're going to take in defining the sensor APIs. And um, currently we're applying this process to the LiDAR API and also the smart sensor camera API. And with the hope we'll make some proposal and be able to demonstrate the initial uh, sensor APIs at the MAH uh, demo day in November. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, thank you for Simon's uh, presentation. Yeah, talk about the sensor API, the definition and uh, the scope and the plan and the status update. Yeah, so yeah, so uh, as the CJ and the Simon mentioned, so map API, which are in the MIH uh, autonomy working group, just creative. So since for the uh, Tong Tong, so Tong Tong is uh, the navigation in the worldwide, the leader, one of the leader. So Tong Tong will lead the map API, the definition, 
So thanks for Tang Tang for uh, the later we will to be talk about for the map the API the definition and the planning. So yeah, so William, this is your turn. Yeah, thanks for tier four CJ Simon and uh, our AD chair Tony's debrief on the uh, current and the future works. So in the comment section, I would like to walk you through the map parts. We will start from what we need a map for the autonomous driving. The second is that how we use our uh, trans transactional map making platform to help the autonomous driving. The final part, we will talk about the um, with the autonomy group, what is the map current work and the future plan for the autom autonomous driving. So let's begin next. So what we need map, um, there's the three um, three main role can briefly um, introduce why we need uh, the the map. Next, please. So next. So um, the first one is perception. It helps to see beyond what the sensors in the vehicle can see. Next. And for the location. It helps to car to localized within the land level at the CM level position. The next. And also with the past planning, um, it supports the car to make safe and reliable decision making while this uh, driving customer trust. So in short, uh, MAPS responds for, for question, what is around me, where I'm exactly, and where do I need to go, and how I I can get there comfortably. So in the latest slide, we'll introduce the different type of uh, TomTom's map and the support in the different uh, AD level. Next. With the TomTom, the ADAS and HD maps, application from navigation to ADAS and uh, to autonomous driving, TomTom's portfolio of the map can support all functionality across the different level of the automation. For certain level of automation, such as level one and level two, uh, it's quite up to our customer to decide is what product fit the best. And for the higher uh, level, like a uh, level three, even above, the automation is critical to have our HD map. Next, please. From the uh, market uh, coverage, TomTom Tom experienced in the ADAS uh, map, and we are not just leading the uh, automated driving market in level one and level two. We also explored in uh, a higher AD level market. Uh, apart from the map, we also able to provide in the service to have the map up to date on each vehicle and device. So in the coming slides, uh, we will answer on the second question: uh, How we, how our uh, transactional map making platform help the help the autonomous driving? Next, please. So, in this uh, uh, transactional map making platform, um, we can efficiently update the map via our TomTom's unique auto stream solution at the right hand side. On the other hand, um, the platform or keep gathering the data and the latest information onto our map. So this uh, transactional map mapping platform, not just the deliver the, the solution, we also do the continuous the, the update is the data onto the each the vehicle. Next, please. So it is also important to mention uh, our unique solution, Auto Stream which make the uh, map update very fast. Um, auto stream service streams map data in title, in tiles, not in title, in tiles and layers along route or the most probable path. Our auto stream onboard client integrate with the ADAS uh, horizon provider, which we'll introduce later, and also reduce the complexity and the developing time and uh, minimize the data consumption with some poor catch, which means uh, 
customer or a user, they just uh, download what they need. And it is also glad that AutoWare solution also include our uh, AutoStream solution and enjoy this uh, benefit. Next, please. And uh, um, this is the this is the um, program passed. We allow this the data from vehicle sent back to system to reuse and share this data with the vehicle and other devices. Next, please. So this is the, our auto stream demonstration. So in this demo, um, we will show you the two cases. The first one, the application can with the selected paste um, as input, auto stream service will start to download. So you can see um, can the, the user application is start to select the path. Then the system will start to download the tiles and each layer's information. And meanwhile, our system will start to prefetch this data uh, before before this uh, vehicle get this destination and use this data. So this is the first use case. In the second use case, you can see um, the auto stream solution can also cooperate with our um, TomTom -tom navigation system. You can click at the two uh, point and can start to download this uh, auto stream data. So this is the HD level. You can see um, this is the label information to be downloaded. So in these uh, two cases, you can see the auto stream, how efficient it is, and also it can only control this data um, it wants to download. So um, with the cloud and the vehicle map service, we then discussed uh, how the solution implemented into MIH solution. So in coming slides, We'll focus on what is the current work and plan. Next, please. So um, in this slide, um, we will reply how how we mapping how we mapping the vehicle location on the map. In this architecture diagram, we can start from um, the the three uh, main uh, area. The left hand side is the sensor area. We have a GNSS, TECO, Dryro, accelerometer. And in the middle area, there's a location manager, which is doing the fusion data. And with the precision engine, also provide this uh, fused data. At the right hand side, with our um, uh, virtual horizon solution, and also with the autoware solution, we will utilize the AutoWare solution to download the map. Then, uh, then uh, the the Virtual Horizon uh, solution SDK will use this data from the sensor and also from this the map input and generate the ADAS the version two e Horizon data. So uh, let's come back to the positioning. Um, the sensor data will provide. Uh, this uh, uh, sensor data to positioning and location manager. So then later, this location manager and uh, position engine will fuse this data and offer to uh, the TomTom -tom onboard so solution, which we use the sensor data, which include the GNSS, the Ceramita, dry roll, and tackle, etc. Next, please. And next, and with this, sorry, the previous one, and with this, the the, the fuse data, we also have a debt reckoning uh, solution resolved by location manager, and also with the position engine. Um, this is help to um, fuse the data and also do the calculation while in the tunnel situation. Next, please.
and in general, um, this is the this is the, is the map matching solution. In general, uh, map matching assists that this the provided location data to project uh, the vehicle location onto the map. Next, in TomTom, innovative approach was to consider the vehicle trajectory for map matching. So um, the red dot on the on the diagram, which mapping this the uh, um, this the vehicle's location onto the 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 onto the map by using or by considering this uh, trajectory. Next, please. This would improve the map matching, especially in the tunnel, urban canyons, and highway junctions. This is a unique industrial approach with the pattern pending. Next, please. So let's back to another question. What is the interface of the of, of the map we provided for ADAS application? For providing the ADAS data, we will have the uh, standard interface in the ADAS is a version two format. Next, please. And next. And this data would include a gradient, speed limits, curvature, etc. Next. And the message can deliver via the vehicles network like Hembust and Ethernet, etc. Next. And how does it work? First, uh, you can see the diagram. Um, uh, for the virtual horizon, receive the route information from the navigation system, or without applying the route, virtual horizon will calculate a most probable path. With this uh, most probable path, it is expected the route based on the road class information and the uh, historical driving and the turning angles. When coupled with the NavKit nav or our SDK, more advanced data such as blinker information and uh, predict navigation can be used for best, uh, uh, most probable uh, path calculation. Then our virtual horizon has access to map database and can be on board NDS the map or auto string cache. Here we use the auto string cache. Then explore information such as uh, coverage, speed limits, and gradient from the way for the route or map of or the most probable past. Next, please. So um, this is our uh, virtual horizon uh, demonstration. Uh, in this demonstration, we'll show you along the road and uh, and the vehicle horizon speed, provide the speed. So this is the vehicle simulation. Then um, from time to time, this uh, um, this uh, data will provided by our um, virtual horizon engine. And you can see when the car is driving, the data will keep in prefetched and uh, provided to uh, ADAS is the application. Yeah, the uh, awareness uh, because it's one minute per hour. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, so yeah, we can skip this uh, yeah, yeah, uh, demonstration. Yeah, yeah. yeah, next one. So here's the conclusion. Um, we provided the end-to-end HD map service for safe AD. The second, we provide the auto string solution to make the, the map to be upgradable. The third one, our virtual horizon with the ADAS the, uh, version two will feed to the uh, ADAS application. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you for uh, uh, waiting and uh, Shizhe and uh, Simon for today's uh, surely. So yeah, it's ties to our yeah, so yeah, yeah, Emily, so it's uh, for you for ending.
Okay, so uh, is there uh, anyone who would like to ask any question? Okay, I see there is one question from Lu Dong, Future. The autonomous map data, how to compress and share to data center? This, yeah. it should be very large. Yeah, so yeah, that will also be the, yeah, so Wayden, could you uh, maybe uh, have a comment about this question? Um, as I just mentioned uh, in the in the slides, um, the the autonomy map data, which can be uh, NDS map or can be the our auto string solution. So our auto string solution provide a map um, entitled. So you can imagine, nation, there's the there's the tile data is belong to piece of uh, um, they will cut the map in a piece of uh, data and it will become a tile. And then each tile can combine together. So um, it won't be very, very large. It depends how you use this data, especially for our auto string solution. Did I answer your question? Yeah. So, and I saw another uh, question is uh, from uh, Jason. So he is uh, asking about, do we need the uh, LiDAR for the uh, label to the uh, system? So I mind your comment is uh, best to have, yeah, especially in the uh, LO2 plus uh, system, but it will depend on the cost. Yeah, everybody know LiDAR is very expensive and the need a very powerful uh, computing for uh, LiDAR, the data fusion. So yes, and then it will uh, depend on the platform selection and uh, that will, the big computing power will have uh, the thermal issue that will impact of the cooling system design. So that will relative to the old system, the development and the, the, the planning. Yes, so yes, she said, do you have uh, an, uh, another uh, comment? for the uh, LiDAR development in the LO2 system? Um, no, I think you covered it quite well, Tony. It's it's one of the things that's being looked at. And um, yeah, it's, it's for, for L2 plus, typically uh, it is considered agreement, an ingredient in the sensor suite, um, but cost, power consumption, all of these, these factors have to be considered uh, as well. Um, I think there's a lot of interest in applying solid state LIDARs in, in this type of application because of the obvious cost um, benefit. Uh, and, and that's something that is being looked at very closely. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, for the MH members who are joining this webinar, uh, do you guys have any other questions? You can raise your hand right now and open your camera and uh, unmute yourself. Uh, we can do some interaction right now for the QA part. Okay, so if there's no any questions, then we'll wrap up uh, uh, for today's webinar. Thank you for coming. Thanks all the speakers, um, Tony, uh, CJ, Simon and William to join us. Uh, we'll see you. Uh, next month for uh, another uh, working group's um, vision and mission and our progress. Welcome you guys to join ne next month. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.